Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. Then I want to start trying to implement this stuff right away and start testing stuff out there before I even get to the, you know, the plot of land I'm going to, uh, unfortunately, I say, because I really, after, after dealing with all this stuff with my house and just trying to just, just the process of trying to sell your house is so insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like all the hoops I've had to jump through so far and it's still not over yet. You know, I really do not, I don't relish the idea of having to purchase land again anytime soon. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery, statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 145th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a Bipcot No Government License. This allows a reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So we are back. This is Jeremy. And what you are about to hear is an impromptu conversation that ended up starting between Dave and I as Andre ended up bailing on us at the last minute. I'm sure he has a good excuse. He always does on the rare occurrence this has happened, but... Since it just ended up being Dave and I, we were talking, and after we realized that Andre probably wasn't going to show up, we just decided to keep recording and make this into the podcast. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll catch you on the other side. Peace. What the fuck, Andre? Yeah, man. I don't actually have anything to talk about, so we could bullshit for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I know, like I said, I, I'm fine with doing that. I, I want to do something short, but I just oh. like him to get here <laughs> or know for sure that he's more not more than 500,000 new users join daily. What 500? Wait, wait, join what? It, Telegram. See, I saw that, but then I also saw another. I, it was a headline, and I caught a couple of people's commentary on it, but I didn't read any further. Something about Telegram relinquishing, or not relinquishing, but um, I guess giving up and uh, saying that uh, the Russian government can have access to certain things. You want me to get Shane in here? Um, and I if mean, Andre just jumps in, he jumps in later. It's 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 really last minute at this point because we're already past the show time to start the show yeah let's just keep talking uh, okay i i um i think this wild man encrypted messaging i think once people really realize what it is it's like well why would i not put another layer of you can't read this on my phone you know like why would i not do that you yeah? know what do you mean well i'm of how, encryption you know well, like, yeah, i know that but how, how did we jump to that for, well because like i mean telegram uses it to a we were just time, talking but it's not it's not very i i don't i don't i mean i talk about a lot of stuff that most people probably wouldn't talk about when it's not being encrypted but i, I don't really care because i talk about the same thing on our shows but uh like if i need if i have stuff that i want to be encrypted <laughs> uh, i still use signal for that 
I, I use Telegram because I, I know a lot more people on it. And I like the the group setups that, that I have. And I'm, I'm able to just, you know, talk to a bunch of people at once. And it's convenient and whatever. Um, but I, I still don't trust the encryption on, on Telegram. And that was before this announcement. Like I said, I haven't dug too far into it. But the announcement that they were going to, you know, basically let the government, the Russian government in the same way. Wasn't it Google or at Google that did that? Verizon did that with the U.S. government? Kind of like played it. Oh, first. they're actually... Telegram is letting Russia in. Like I said, I caught a, I caught a headline and I caught a couple of people's commentary about it. The gist I got of it was that was the case, and I think it stems from like the Russian government threatening them, basically the same way that the U.S. government had threatened Google and Apple and all these other companies uh, all these other times. It was the same type of thing. And what the way the sense I got was that Telegram kind of buckled and was like, "All right, fine." Uh, so like I said, uh, I don't know that much about it yet, but if true, then, you know, telegram might be even less secure, which is unfortunate because I do like it. I, I enjoy, it. it's probably been out of all the apps I like tried for these. I actually, I like it more than I like signal, but I like signal for the encryption and like certain people, I certain, yeah. When certain, President Trump is using Signal, it kind of it's kind of an eye opener. Well, the the Signal protocol has been implemented. Like Facebook Messenger actually implemented. I think Skype implemented it in their last round too. Like it is the top of the line right now. They really, you know. So yeah, but their user interface, I guess, is not as nice. Or maybe I'm just oh wow. So Facebook actually did that. I believe so. I know Skype did. I think I'm trying to remember because I listen to Sovereign Tech and I pick up a lot of information from from that show about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty. Pre what what's Sovereign Tech about? Maybe we could do a show about shows. <laughs> Sovereign Tech. What uh, shows are you listening to? Yeah. Oh well, so so I haven't heard about it. So so oh, Sovereign Tech is uh, Brian Sovereign. He's a. Uh, He's kind of like a tech journalist, but he's not. He's he's never really been a journalist. He kind of just was always a tech nerd and kind of got into all this stuff and then started uh -huh. doing it. And he's a uh, uh, girlfriend, partner, whatever they whatever they call each other. Uh, Stephanie Murphy. They do. They also do the Sex and Science Hour together. And she's like a <laughs> PhD. She's doctor doctor of a bunch of different stuff. Ridiculously smart people. Like she's ridiculously smart. Um, he's a uh, pretty darn you know he's pretty smart too they're kind of like leftist libertarians i guess but uh most people you know, most people would a lot of people would classify him as but i don't care you know I, I i dig the show and he's really uh hey man as long as you know i don't always i as long as we agree on the nap i like i was saying the rest is well, kind of yeah, as long yeah, as you're see, not going to but, aggress against me we're well, cool <laughs> Although, see, those are two different things, actually, because, you know, you, you you make that blanket statement. And then, as I've tried to point out before, people like, you know, Jim Jesus, people like me, people like Brian uh, would be like, well, fuck your nap. But we're just not going to aggress against you because we choose not like it's not <laughs> we don't think it's a very good thing to do. It's not cool. We don't, you know, but it's not has nothing to do with the nap. So those are two actually two separate things. Um, but yeah, but he, he covers a lot of tech and science stuff, uh, does some video game stuff. Uh, he's into like a different metal music and stuff. So he does a couple, you know, every once in a while, he'll do segments on that. But, you know, it's usually an it's usually a uh, hour or two hour show. And, you know, really, a, lot, a lot of really good shit in there. I pick up a lot of stuff. He's the one that I picked the Amazon World Domination Tour. I, he's the one I picked that up from because he's been saying that for like five years. He was like way ahead of the curve on that, like calling this. Uh, yeah, if, Am if Amazon's not ta taxed soon... At the rate that, like, say, Walmart or other competitors of theirs are, uh, they're essentially just going to eventually buy out all those companies that are having to pay taxes. So, because those are fail failing built business models when you're facing a competitor that doesn't have to pay taxes. You can't compete. It's just fact. Yeah. So, there's... The the Amazon world domination thing is kind of scary. <laughs> well, it's but it's you can see why. I mean, people a lot of people thought Be Bezos was crazy forever because I mean you know a guy started in his what his garage basically selling books or basement or whatever it was, and then yeah. 
you know, didn't didn't really actually officially turn a profit to like what a couple of years ago. The one of the one of the quarters a couple of years ago was like the first time they officially broke through. Um, but obviously, they've been like making shit forever. But you know, he had this just long term vision. Well, he started of, with the books, didn't they? That was like yeah, their first. Yeah, that, yeah. They, they, they were, I remember Amazon like bookstore. from the jump sheet. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I remember when it was an online, just an online bookstore, and then they started expanding. Like, you but, could only get books there. I mean, that's crazy. But yeah, I mean, now you can get anything there. They've already got the food thing with Whole Foods. Uh, they're trying. To, they're trying to find ways to get into the money money situation. They're trying to essentially create. I mean, they already have gift cards and stuff, but they're essentially trying to create their own bank. You know, I, I, that really does. Seem oh, Amazon's about to do it. Yeah. So. You know, you get those things so, sewn up, and it's not that. Uh, what, what's the way that uh, Brian Sauber puts it? It's, it's not that he wants. It's not that like Bezos and Amazon want to control everything because they don't have to. All you have to do is control the distribution of everything, and then you're fucking golden. And essentially, if you get a bank and you're basically because already, what is it? Some, th- something ridiculous. Like what's the number I heard thrown around a lot last year? Something like over fifty percent of. The rev of of credit card purchases or Amazon purchases in the U.S. something something insane like that, uh, something crazy like that. I mean, so it has to be, yeah. So like they're already they're already controlling the distribution for most products, you <laughs> know, in, in a lot of ways, and then they'll control the distribution of certain amount, certain type of money too, or currency, whatever. Yeah, man, it's uh. It's it's kind of insane, but it's you know it's it's the the quasi fascist, soft fascist, whatever you want to call it, the proto fat. I, I like well, wait proto, till I, there's just I, an I, Amazon I, coin. I, I like proto proto fascist. Well, see that's the thing. That's the only way, and that's another thing I picked up because a lot of people always said that uh, they you know there was there was rumblings that Amazon was going to start accepting Bitcoin. There's it's happened a couple of times. It happened again a couple of months ago, and. I just remember uh, Sovereign Tech talk being talked about on Sovereign Tech a while back about the fact that it'll never happen because unless they can control it, <laughs> Bezos wants nothing to do with it. Like all their tech, they want nothing to do with it unless they can purchase it outright from whoever has it or it's created in their lab, whatever their, I forget what their lab is called, but what Amazon labs, they, they want nothing to do with it. So if they do, wow. it'll event, they'll wait till they have their perfect version of the Amazon coin or whatever it is before they well, roll at, at this out. point, he has to, have, he hosts the, the Amazon servers host like 20, 30% of the all internet traffic. Uh, with that, you can uh, then just do the metadata, extrapolate all kinds of stuff that you can feed to AI and get. And he, he at this point, in my opinion, can know stuff before it's going to happen or live time. Uh, well, that's what they're aiming that's, for. That's kind of scary. That's what they're aiming well, that, for. I mean, once a business does that, they're, they kind of win, don't they? There's no way to beat them. Well, they're, well, somebody – see, in the world of technology, somebody can always come along and get – I mean – they're hampered by government because there's usually barriers to entry and stuff like that. And there are regulations put in place to protect certain people and certain businesses and certain types of businesses. And Amazon is probably going to fall into that category pretty soon, permanently, if it isn't there officially yet. But that, you know, as the too big to fail type thing, <laughs> but yeah, sadly, I'm, yeah. but yeah, but once, cause, and plus once that tech is available, somebody, you know, somebody else will be able to snap it up too. At some point, they won't, you won't be able to keep a proprietary for very long in this day and age, but yeah, that there, that's kind of what they're working towards the ability, the ability to, you know, that's what like the, the app, the, you know, the, the rollout of all their, and their constant improvements to the Amazon apps and stuff like that you can use. So like they can get the shopping experience down pat so like you said they can call it a oh it's so spooky they keep they warn me like every time i'm buying something if you turn your microphone on in the app we'll reduce your purchase by 10 percent. and it's like uh no no thanks i don't know if having a microphone on my thing is worth 10 percent off well yeah that's i i i've no i don't think i've ever had the amazon i may have had it for a little while just to do some shopping things back in the day but uh, when it first came well, out, most phones come but, stock with it now well, I, yeah, I, I guess, I don't know. Well, I also have an older model too. I, I'm still rocking a Samsung Galaxy 4 because I, I bought, I bought another one. New. I bought another one new a couple of years ago because it was, uh, because I was able to get my hands on a brand new one. And I was Dude, like, you oh, you can get like a, 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 a Galaxy 7. For almost nothing, dude. You just go online. They're like, I don't want bucks. the 7 because past the 4, 
Uh, I think one version of the five they kept it the same, but pretty much everything beyond that they stopped. Uh, they started making them like the iPhones, where there weren't removable batteries, and that's like a, mm-hmm. a, a, a no go. That's like a you know deal breaker for me. That's the word I was looking for, deal breaker, uh, because I need to have that because I don't you know I know the fact I know that you know these damn little things we carry in our pocket can be turned on remotely, uh, even if they're not on. You know the and being able to take the battery out is the only way to be able to stop that, which is one of the big reasons I never. Oh, you're just being paranoid. They don't have that. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Sure. They don't. Um, (sighs) At this point, I don't know, man, there's probably like 12 microphones live in my house at all times. So I don't, I mean, at this point, I don't care. They know if they want to know what I say, I'm an open book. Yeah, I think I think my dishwasher might be a smart dishwasher. I can't remember. I know I made sure none of the other ones, I, uh, other things I got were smart units, even though they, they tried to push them on me when I was buying my stuff. Although that's when they these mm-hmm. they were first becoming big because this was six, seven years ago, almost seven years ago, I guess now when I bought all the uh, appliances. And uh, even though you've tried to tell me from time over and over and over again that I actually have a smart meter here, I know we don't. <laughs> they never actually got here. That was one of the few things the Long Island moms got up and they just came about. and swapped mine out the other day for a smart meter. It's kind of spooky. They've asked me a couple of times through through a couple of different methods, and I've made sure to say no. But that was one of the things the Long Island moms actually got stopped here years ago because a bunch of them were really freaked out and all. Uh, you know, a lot of the they were already they were already conspiracy minded about other stuff, so they immediately lashed onto that one. And they, you know, they 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 spoke up enough, and you know, they put off the plans. And then, plus the power company that was here when they tried to do it actually got the boot was was the one that got the boot after Sandy because they did such a hard. They were so ill prepared for a, a storm of that size, and they did such a horrible job with the with the aftermath and trying to get the power back on that they actually got booted. <laughs> you know, the one monopolized company that we're allowed to choose from <laughs> because they're the one who gets the contract with the government got the boot, and the government installed yeah. another one, another you know monopoly that uh, was supposed to be gentler, kinder, all these things. I mean, I think my power. <laughs> rates actually did go down yeah, gentler kinder fascism yeah my, my my rates actually did go down a little bit so i can't complain that much i guess you know for what it, for whatever it's worth which is of course very helpful to me but it's because probably because they got s- subsidies from the state to do it probably but i don't care because number one i'm leaving the state number two i stopped getting extorted a while ago uh and number three you know it, like i said it just for, for the time being it works out for me because it, it benefits <coughs> me with my uh mining, an, um, with my mining adventures you know, slightly you have an, lower um, energy costs. You haven't like directly figured out a, a landing spot yet, have you? No, I well, because everything else is still up in the air with me. You know, my my next court date's mm-hmm. not for another th- almost three weeks. I think actually, I think I think it might be three weeks from today. It's the twelfth, yeah. So that's probably three weeks from today. Ugh. And I, you know, I'll talk to my lawyer before then. I'm going to call him like a week or two before then and check in and see because you know. The way it was left, there was the possibility that a deal could get worked out before we actually show up to court next time, as long as they don't drag their feet again. But, you know, they've been known to drag their feet pretty much every time. So we'll see. And the sale of my house, I haven't actually heard anything. You know, currently it's in the, you know, there's one last thing that I have to do, which is Mm -hmm. get the... I have a proposal that got sent to me from the contractor I hire. I was hiring in order to get all the permits that I needed that were never done because my mom never took care of them, even though she told me she would. And now in order to sell the house, I have to take care of them. Uh, I finally got the contract from the guy, but I've been waiting to hear back from him for a couple of days because he spelled my name wrong when he sent it to me in an email. And I told him, you know, I just need this corrected and send me a new one. And I'll, you know, we could, we could start this process because I managed, I had to borrow more money to be able to come up with the deposit for this. But I I did all that, but then I haven't heard from him. And then we had snow. And then I guess he didn't bother to respond to my last email. He just mailed me an actual copy of the proposal, but it was before he said he's before he changed the name. So it's the copy I got today is no good because it has my name spelled incorrectly. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could be a dick and really? sign. I guess it could be a dick and sign it and later on try to claim it's not me. I don't know, but I don't want to. I don't want to go through this because this was a friend of a friend. <laughs> number one and number two, I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to be a dick like this. I just want to get it over with. So with all that up and the, like that's pretty much the one last thing I'm dealing with. Like I said, I borrowed the money, so I have the money to get the permit process started with this contractor who's going to do all the work. Like he's going to do everything for me. He's got the because we also have to you know to follow the 
state all the state regulations we have to bring an ele- I have to bring an electrician in and a plumber along with the contractor to sign off on Ugh. everything that was done to make sure that everything is up to code and you know I'm pretty sure it is like there shouldn't be a problem with the plumbing because it was put in by a, by a, a licensed plumber he's since retired but at the time he was a licensed plumber when he put everything in so that should be fine uh, the electric the ele- electric uh, yeah the electric was done I think largely by my dad and a friend of mine, both who have a decent amount of electrical experience. I mean, not like a whole lot, but like enough to be figure out what they're doing for basic outlets and stuff like that. So it shouldn't be a problem, <laughs> uh, you know, but it's just a matter of getting all this stuff done. Other than that, it's in the potential buyer's hands at this point because they had 45 days from the contract being effective, which was a month ago from whatever, like, yeah, well, no, a couple of weeks ago, the twelfth was the was the was when it started. So, uh, yeah, I really don't know what it's going to happen, but my plan right now is to get through my lat. Uh, well, I'm going to finally officially finish work again <laughs> uh, as of uh, as of April seventh, I think, and then I'm going to wait until after my court date on the twelfth if it doesn't get settled out before then, and then figure out what's happening after that. But at that point, as long as I have or as long as I know the deal for the house at that point is actually going to happen, it's just we have a closing date. We're just like, we're, you know, waiting to catch once I have the official closing date and I know that there's a really good chance that this is going to go through and like a very slim chance that it's going to fall through at the last second. Uh, then I can actually use whatever remaining credit I have before the actual sale of the house to start traveling because I actually have to get out to Indiana and start scouting around for locations. Uh, well, just for you know for places for us to rent for the time being, uh, and then uh, and then get us out there. So, yeah, man, uh, I'm still hoping to be there before June because I would really like to be there, set up and relatively you know, settled in before the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest at the end of June. Are you um, still having the intentions of farming? That is the long-term plan. I, like I said, short-term, we just, I just want to get my family and me, my, me and my family out there. And yeah. once I get out there, then hopefully get Jen set up with the job pretty, you know, relatively quickly and I'll start doing the homeschool, you know, the unschool thing, the unschool dad thing, and you know, with the girls. And hopefully between the money she's able to bring in and whatever I can manage to do, you know, whatever side hustles I can come up with to try to bring in a little money. The plan is to work together with a couple of people, including for, <laughs> including a former guest of the show and the like the long term plan is actually to get my, not only my farm up my farm and my my bison ranch up and running but also have that work kind of hand in hand with a private school uh, pri- uh kind of like private school for ki- uh, kids with special needs that actually focuses Ooh. on uh, animal animal behavioral f- therapy so we can actually integrate the two projects together Goats are great with kids. Yeah, I know goats that and baby goats. Yeah, well, no, like I said, I you know this this is the long term plan, and I you know so that's why I want to get out there, figure this out, and then my that's a great plan. Yeah, my 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 goal is to at least have the location scouted out, and hopefully you know the area at least you know if we end up finding a place and then losing out because we don't have the money in time, I you know I expect something like that might come up, but at least have the general area of where we're gonna go, and most of the money at least in place or we know it's coming to be put in place you know soon within a year year and a half like that's my that's my tentative goal right now after i get out there a year and a half from then and then hopefully you know within a year or so or less from that at least a farm will be up and running you know so yeah man that's the plan yeah <laughs> you, all you have to do is make a plan and, and stay, stick to it yeah that's all that's- you got to do that really is. <laughs> uh, it's either going to fail or you're going to win. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I think I, I think once I get into all this, uh, I'll be all right with it. And then, well, uh, e- even if it fails as far as being able to like generate a lot of money for the farm, you know, as long as I can feed my family and we can support ourselves, you know, that's good enough for me, too. <laughs> 
Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll figure I something think, else out. I think do, the I first guess. couple of years farming will be, it'd be, they'll be rough. You know, they'll, they'll be they usually learning are from experiences. What I, oh, and, yeah, they usually are. But that's luckily I have plenty of other people to learn from and mistakes I can try not to make based on mistakes. Other people have made, <laughs> you know, um, I'm still, I still think I'm going to just, just because it's been so like I've dabbled in like gardening here and there but it's been a long time since I've done even that very seriously. So I still think I'm probably, especially once I get the sale of my house complete and I pay off all the other stuff and I have a, a little bit of money to work with. I, I think one of the things I'm going to invest in is that uh, course by uh, Curtis Stone, which is mm -hmm. I think like a grand or something like that. If you buy it all, if you pay for it all in one shot and start studying the heck out of that so I can actually get up and running. Cause that's the other, there's thing. a book you can, Oh, there's a bunch there's of a different book, stuff. Actually, I, I know there's I have a, a book yeah. that um, it's called uh, The Market Gardener by Jean-Martin Fautier. <laughs> He's a French Canadian. Uh, I've and heard that title before. It, and basically, um, Curtis Stone runs off of what he does. I mean, there's a little differences, but I don't know if Curtis Stone's $1,000 thing is worth the book that you can just buy from Jean Martin. I don't know. I, I trust our former guest drew sample and he's, he, you know, he still claims it's worth it. He bought it originally and still thinks despite he, despite him even going certain different ways than what Curtis had talked about, he still thinks it's a worthwhile investment. So I'll take his word for it. <laughs> you know, it's one well, of those things that you'll cover, have to it, let me know how it pans out. Yeah, it covers a lot of stuff because that's part of the other thing I want. You know, like I said, I have to go. I have to get out there and scout stuff just to be able to for us to move out there to rent someplace. But, there, you know, I have a certain set of criteria. I'm trying to have get filled where the place that we rent not only obviously allows pets, which just doing some online searches and stuff. At least I've been able to find a decent amount of those that are off the bat. So that's good. But I also want to be able to find one that has a yard that I'm allowed to use, you know, for gardening purposes, as I guess, as I guess the best way to couch it to any potential landlord. But then as long as I know I have that ability and that, you know, whatever amount of area to work with, then I want to start trying to implement this stuff right away and start testing stuff out there before I even get to, the you know the plot of land i'm gonna uh, unfortunately i say because i really after after dealing with all this stuff with my house and just trying to just just the process of trying to sell your house is so insane mm -hmm. <laughs> like all the hoops i've had to jump through so far and it's still not over yet you know i really <laughs> do not i don't relish the idea of having to purchase land again anytime soon Although <laughs> I know for this this particular idea that I have and this this just dream I have, it's kind of a foregone conclusion I, that as somebody's going to have tells to own me the it's land. Not, <laughs> something tells me it's not going to be as difficult uh, well, doing it purchasing you know, the land elsewhere. Well, see again, I, New I, York I, is a sh is a hellhole. It, it is for regulations. But even in here, even in this hellhole, I was spoiled in the buying of this house because. I bought this house and like I saw the house when I went looking because my the landlord at the place that I, I had been living at and I had started my business out of had decided to kick to invoke the because we base we had what essentially looked like a year to year lease, but it but it had like, you know, these clauses that essentially made it a month to month lease. But I was fine mm -hmm. with that when I first got there. And, you know, I had, I ended up being there for a year and a half altogether. But, uh, you know, a little over a year, he told me that he decided he was kicking me out because the girl upstairs was moving out and he was going to renovate the entire place and rent it out as one whole unit for more money. And so oh, I, I, had, nice. I, I was I was basically he, originally he wanted to give me a month, but I got I convinced him to give me three because of the nature of what, you know, he, he put me under. I didn't end up needing the full three because I went out and started looking like I think I went for two weekends to look at houses. I saw like 10 houses within a two weekend span, like five, you know, six, five, five and five, six and four, whatever it was. It was the second weekend. It was the seventh house I had seen total. 
and I, I, you know, I saw the house, decided I wanted it just because of the size of the yard. But between me going to the house and see, like, visiting it for the first time with my, you know, my agent and looking around and seeing everything, from that point to the point that I sat down at the table with the with the sellers and their attorney and my attorney and whoever else was there was like almost a month to the day. It happened like that quickly. <laughs> Like I saw it, we put it in an offer, they accepted, I applied for the mortgage, the mortgage was, ex- the, 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 and there was even some issues with the mortgage originally. And then we re- reworked some things and then they, ex- they, they, ex- they accepted the mortgage, you know, agreement and whatever I applied, you know, I was, a, I was, uh, approved rather for the mortgage and we were off and running and yeah, I was able to close in a month. So this process is already driving me insane. <laughs> being on the other side and having it take, yeah. like, having every little stupid thing. Like I said, from the uh, originally, I think I said last week from the it termites. Was, it was, it was, I had to do a lot to sell my, my house, uh, a couple of years back when I did, it was, I did a lot of, uh, it was in my opinion, a lot. You probably are having to do triple what I've had to do to sell mine, but it, yeah, I, there's crazy regulations in the housing market. I, I wonder yeah, what would happen to the housing market if those regulations weren't there though. It would be, be great. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, they're 3D printing entire cities in China now. Like, don't don't fool yourself that there aren't going to be entire printed cities in America. What I'm saying is, is like all these regulations are kind of useless when uh, this is just zone like step one, right? Of yeah, but those could 3D be perfect. You know, these are going to be done perfectly. <laughs> no, no mistakes. Well, yeah, but those, yeah, but they can all be done to not only to, to specification, including the regulations <laughs> and they can, mm-hmm. they can hit the marks much better than any contract. Well, a lot of these regulations are to stop human shit lordery, you know? Well, they're, they're actually, well, I think a lot of them are just shortcuts and stuff. <laughs> a lot of them are, a lot of them are just there to, to, you know, have control, make people money. Yeah, and that too. <laughs> like the, you know, I think that's just that's another thing that's thrust frustrated me through this whole process because I have to deal with people like real estate agents, real estate attorneys, whether you know, in this situation or my legal situation, I have to deal with like you know, criminal lawyers and all this stuff, and all these people I could talk to who have to deal with government, whether they either work for government, the, some people I have to talk to, or the other people that I'm involved with that that I, I deal with government on a daily basis. Every one of them can end up saying. Yeah, I know this is all insane and it's all BS, but they're all, you know, at the, what can we do about it? Basically that's because they try to move on. Like my real real estate attorney said that to Mm -hmm. me the other day when I was lamenting about how insane this has gotten with the permits and everything else and how everything's being held up. And because of that, you paid for a a house, a house selling permit yet. It's like, what? That's basically what it is. It's like jump through all these hoops just so you can sell your house. You know, like I said, I, I just want to get my, I well, get my money. Well, at least you'll be good riddance, you know, just this will be behind you in a yeah, couple of months, I, maybe this year. Well, you know, and I've said, I've said to multiple people that, you know, if it's not done by mid year, I may go and like, I may go completely insane if I'm not out of here. Cause at that point I'll be completely. Well, broke. I don't want to see that. <laughs> You know, I, I don't, I, this house needs to be sold. If, if this ends up, if the deal ends up falling through, I'm kind of in a lot of trouble <laughs> and you know, I'm not the, the, I, the, at that point I'll just be pl- playing beat the clock before foreclosure proceedings get uh, implemented and I try to sell the house again before it actually gets foreclosed on. <laughs> because I won't have another, I won't really have another option at that point. So yeah, I'm, ho- I'm hoping it doesn't according, according like the last I heard from my real estate agent was today. And she told me got, she got word back on the inspection or the appraisal and nothing. They, there was nothing said about it, which means nothing's changing, which means the, this, the, the price that they agreed to in the contract is going to stay, which is great, which should mean everything's proceeding. Uh, the only thing, I guess, the only curveball left is if for some reason the potential buyer gets the, rejected for the mortgage that they were already supposed to be pre-approved for. <laughs> I, I just, I would be interested to see how the free market would regulate this instead of the state is all. I, I would, 
we're not given that opportunity really well, right we're not. because so much of it is forced through legislation you have to have this permit you have to do this you have to do it's not i'm not buying your house unless you go get this permit go do this and that's how it should be uh well, instead of unfortunately that's how it's you being. can't even sell your house unless you go get this well shit, i you know? see like, that's, that's the thing i actually could you know that, that that's the thing in this situation it's kind of it's it's not as cut and dry as that because it is essentially the buyer say the potential buyer saying i want you to get this thing in basically so they don't have to handle it and i take care of it first and then they know they're they're good to go from the beginning but they are also i believe any buyer in that situation is is it's saying things like that because they've been conditioned to believe that this is what's necessary this has to be done you know at some point they'll have to deal with it which is why they want it done now because they know this is the way it's supposed to be done according to government so it's mm -hmm. you know it's it like i said the end result may be the same be the same but i think there is a little bit of a distinction there that they're not necessarily you know because the buyer is the one requesting it in this case you know my my attorney my attorney my my real estate attorney both times that there was a a proposed contract ready to come up he wanted to write the contract up from our end being that the the buy, a potential buyer was buying the house completely as is at meaning like there was no going to be no title searches for permits or anything like that like just the way it is it's yours you know good luck <laughs> and i had <laughs> i i talked i had to talk him out of it both times because i was just like no it's it, i know it's just going to go easier this way unfortunately well not for me but in the long run, it'll make it easier if I uh, take care of these things first. It's just, of course, every little stupid thing. And this time I can't, you know, the delay on my end with the permits at, like, uh, at this point cannot actually be blamed on the state entirely. It's actually blamed. I'm sure, I'm sure the state's to blame at some point, you know, because the fact that this guy hasn't been at work the past couple of days, I'm sure has something to do with the monopolized snow, snow, removal, uh, snow removal service that the state provides and him not being able to get to places on time or where he needs to be, because I know I've had issues with that plenty of times. Uh, oh, the only reason today anybody was able to get anywhere after the huge snowstorm we got yesterday is because we went from having another huge nor'easter blow here through here to it jacking up to over 45 today and really sunny and all the stuff's starting to melt in a hurry <laughs> which uh which is good for the roads but really bad for me because despite all that i still had to spend two and a half hours shoveling this morning before i could get out to the one oh stop i forgot that it's still snow in places well yeah it, it normally like we've there's been snows in april here but usually like freak ones every like five to ten years and it's not a lot you know or catch you yeah. off guard like three or four inches or something but there's been actually what's been classified as nor'easters three of them in a like less than a month span after it had been a relatively mild winter as far as snow because there had been blast there had been a couple of big storms but it wasn't like the consistent snow like it normally was and plus there was the the crazy temperature spikes the whole winter where it would all of a sudden shoot up to the 60s and 70s for like almost an entire week and then drop down again mm -hmm. to the 30s and maybe even the 20s for a couple of weeks and then it would all of a sudden shoot back up out of nowhere so it's been that it's been that way the entire winter and now all of a sudden march has just been one huge storm blowing through the entire north uh through the entire eastern section of the country i think uh so yeah it's been fun man it just this one was probably the most irritating for me because like i said it's almost the end of march they normally don't come and if they do come this late they're never this big and i'm where i was down to working with a shovel that's already that's been cracked for pretty much the entire season but because we didn't have to deal with a lot of snow, I wasn't super worried about it. I'm like, oh, this will get me through the season and we'll be fine. <laughs> You're moving. So yeah, like, exactly. Well, that was, why yeah. buy another one? Exactly. Well, I, I'm moving to someplace that I'll probably end up getting more snow for the time being. You know, if we end up in northern Indiana, but at least I'll be, you know, I'll buy brand new stuff and I'll have, you know, <laughs> I, I probably yeah. won't. I pro I'll also probably won't be as tightly packed with my neighbors as I am here. So I'll be able to have things like, you know, a little mini plow of my own or something that I won't have to worry about all this crap, but yeah. yeah. So we, uh, yeah, you'll probably have a tractor or something. You could just plow your whole driveway with. 
Exactly. So, but yeah, so I, I had to go out this morning and deal with it because unfortunately, since it did start, the temperature did start rising almost right after the storm and things did start to melt. It made the snow extremely heavy, which means my little electric snow blower <laughs> is not super efficient. And it can only handle up to, it says it can handle up to 12 inches of snow, but usually it gets bogged down at eight or higher, especially if it's wet snow. And so I had to, between trying to use that thing and, you know, unjam it every one or two pushes and using the shovel that the crack finally split open. So there was a little triangle. So like, even if I managed to get all the way down to the driveway, there'd just be like this little triangle in the middle that was left there of snow. <laughs> So I had to go back and do another round on every one of those. It was just it was a pain in the ass. Like and like I said, of course, hours later, everything's starting to melt. But if I hadn't done all that, the stuff in the driveway would have been even messier. And I had to get to work because there was only somehow my client, the one client I usually see on Thursdays, who I can usually count on for getting out of work on a, uh, any any type of snow day. Her office, a bunch of people thought the snow was coming earlier and everybody called out of work or called their or called businesses closed for yesterday. So today they had to come in because they couldn't afford to be closed for two days. So even though the mm -hmm. way it was even worse, people were all up. Like apparently my clients were up at four o'clock in the morning to do sho to shovel themselves out so they could get to work. And I got a text message at eight. It's like, yeah, I made it to work. So you got to go to the dogs. And I'm like, man, really? The one one thing I have to do. <laughs> I had to dig out two, two and a half hours of digging out just for that one thing. And the whole time I'm, just, <laughs> I'm cursing New York the whole time, you know, because of course at the very, very end, the, the, the snow removal service, which I had mentioned earlier in reference to the, whatchamacallit, to the contractor I'm trying to, I'm working with. They didn't actually come down my block until I think after 12 o'clock, like afternoon, after 12, 12 o'clock, 1230, somewhere around there. And of course, they come down and they like to go pretty fast and they they love to blast through the stuff on the edge of the road and bury everybody's driveway, especially the people who just finished digging everything out, including the end of their driveway. And <laughs> this month, this motherfucker, I, I saw him come, go up the block in the other direction. So I stopped what I was doing and waited. And he came back down the block, the other side on my side and buried my driveway back in a little bit that I had just finished digging all the way out. So I was like, all right. And I went out there and dug that back out. But then I saw him come back up the block the, on the other side once again. So I'm like, well, this probably means he's coming back down my block again. Fuck. So I sat there and waited and waited and waited and he never showed up. So I'm like, fuck it, fine. I, I got to get to work anyway. I got to get in there and take a shower because now I'm like sweating profusely because I have, it's cold enough that even with gloves on, my fingertips are getting like that little bit of numbness in them. <laughs> but I'm, but, but it's actually like 45 degrees out and I have my heavy jacket on and I'm sweating because I'm out there working. So I'm like, I just got to get a shower, whatever. I go and take a shower. I come back outside. Not only did that motherfucker finally turn around and come back down the other block, but then like minutes later, as I was coming out of the bathroom and walking into my kitchen so I could see out the front, uh, the front of my house to where the street was, I see the bigger town truck now coming down, going up the block, but starting on my side of the street and blasting everything that had basically taken up what what uh, where a car would have fit in front of my neighbor's house, that much snow, and just dumped it all right at the edge of my driveway. <laughs> wow. To the point that I actually had to go wow. back out there and shovel it. Like I could have driven over it with my, cause I have all wheel drive. So I, pr I could have made it over it, but <laughs> number one, why risk it? Well, number one, Jen also had to borrow the car after I got back. And I, you know, I, I don't like to put her in a position where she has to be any, any less safe than she would, you know, than she would need to be, <laughs> you know, I don't mind doing like blasting over stuff like that. But number two, once you drive over that, then all that stuff becomes impacted. And then once the temperature drives at night, everything will freeze. And then it becomes even more of a fucking mess. Uh, so it's like oh, yeah. it, it had to be dealt with uh, before I drove over it, unfortunately. <laughs> so here I am after showering and getting ready and finally dragging myself out of the house to go to this one stop. I had to stop and shovel again for like another 10 minutes to the point where I started sweating again. <laughs> The whole time, Fun. cursing the cursing the New York State government and the local government and everything I have to deal with here. 
because I'm like, I, I, uh, I know it might. The be. nightmare will be over soon, Jeremy. Just you'll you'll get out of there eventually. See, I believe it. I, I eventually, yes. Eventually, I believe. Soon, uh, I want to believe, but I, I've had a hard time coming to grips with that because, well, these stupid little things keep getting put in my way, and I was I was gonna say I was just about to say before. I'm sure some of this could be my, you know, my own confirmation bias where I seem to think that every problem I have can be tied to government. But it really does seem that in this situation, every little thing, every little hold up, every little hiccup, every little, you know, every extra amount of money I have to try to find some way to shell out just to be able to sell my house to get back the money that I'm supposedly owed you know, on this, you know, what should be a two person transaction, or I guess technically three person because the banks are there four, well, four, I guess, because there are two banks involved too in this whole stupid thing. But there's actually more than, lawyers, yeah, five. <laughs> law, lawyers, agents, uh, the government, like there's all these other things involved that don't necessarily have to be there. And, you know, but in order to get this money that's supposed to be mine, once this deal can finally be consummated, <laughs> it really does seem that every little thing I've run into really can be tied back to government. It's insane. I've actually written, I'm, I'm currently writing, I wrote a pretty long blog post on Steam it the other day about the, the, the trials and tribulations with the, the, the special pickup service for garbage, which I'm forced to pay for, you know, through the monopolized service of the state. I'm forced to pay through that for that through my property taxes, or they'll come take the house that I supposedly own away from me. Um, but like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I now have to write a second one that's going to be even longer that's going to come out tomorrow. That actually had that actually deals with the continuation of that because that one's not overdue. It's just like every level, government at every level is so inept and so inefficient. And well, they literally can't in my price. Way. And that's the biggest problem that most people don't understand about it is once you have a monopoly, you can't price things correctly unless it's a scarce monopoly in, in, in a in a very situational way. Meaning like you got the only cow in town, okay? Yeah, but that doesn't. This is even- your price is what people will pay. But when it's a forced monopoly and people are forced to give all of these funds to this thing that then spends it how it how it wants, it can't price these things correctly because it's not working on a profit margin. It's not working on a, a bottom line. It's not working on any of it. It's all hey, how much money did we steal? And, yeah, wow. Well. And when you're and that's your if that's your build, business model. You're, you're, it's going to be shit because all you can do is react to how much you've gotten stolen. And then, you know, as well as I do, all of these, you know, tit sucking unions that jump onto all the workers it, within the state that slow it and gum it down and make them over, over inflate what they should be getting paid, et cetera, et cetera. It's just bad all around. And in almost all problems in this, it, especially, uh, involving other people in this in this world revolves around how society has been structured, and most people don't understand that they 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 don't they just they don't see it at a, a fundamental level that we're being forced to pay for something that almost none of us agree on. Like that's the only thing we all have in common. <laughs> well, yeah, because most people don't. Most people don't have an issue with it until it affects them directly, and then usually when that happens, it's only one little one little facet of it. So they they're not it's not easy for them to connect the dots. And e- even when somebody like myself can come along and say, "Look, no, look at it happening in all these different facets, all at the same time." To me, like I can show you all these things happening. They'll still, you know, most people are so. I guess you know indoctrinated is the best word for that. That they 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 can just easily shrug it off and go, oh no, like basically you're the aberration. You know, it's no, it's you know that's that's not the norm. You know, every once in a while these things suck, or you know, or even if they agree that it sucks, it's, it's still like I mentioned earlier, the whole you know the apathy to well, what can we do? You know, yeah, it's horrible. I wish we didn't have to deal with it. It's, it really does suck. It, it makes absolutely no sense. But you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I, I've been in more situations like that in my entire life where everyone in the entire room was like, this is retarded. I don't know why we're doing this, but we got to do it. I don't know why. I don't know why humans do that. I, I, I don't get it. It's I'm always the one that's like, hey, guys, this is bullshit. This is not going to work out here, 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 and here. And I'm the one that gets yelled at all the time. Well, so I don't know, man. 
It's because most people are, are. I mean, I get yelled at for other reasons, but <laughs> well, yeah, I yell at you for plenty of them. But there, there's people. Uh, most uh, we uh, most people are inherently followers. That's why that happens. Most people would are don't want to go with the flow, like the whole you know the whole don't rock the boat attitude. Most people in general really do have that, whether it's out of honest coward cowardice or just you know. A, a mix of ignorance, apathy, and like whatever else thrown in there. They, they just, you know, most people don't recognize that. That's it, that, that's just the truth, man. You know, and that that's where all that all stems from. Uh, it's like me and my brother were. We had a long drive today to go visit somebody, and we were talking about we were pa- driving through some back roads, and we're we're looking at all these cow pastures, and how they have them all open grazed instead of paddocked up. And we were talking about how, you know, Joel Saladin will even go over and like try to convince other farmers like, hey, you need to do this. This would, you know, you'd be able to get 30, 40 more cows in here. And uh, they just won't listen. They go, oh, I've been farming this way forever and it'd be it'd be harder for me to change. I, I think I think people do get into modes so hard that they they're like, you know, I, I'd rather just deal with this than trying to do a better or easier way. And and I don't know why humans get it. Is it is it a comfort thing or is it a confirmation bias thing? Uh, well, hashtag why not both? I don't know. I, I think, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm maybe confirmation bias may play part of it. I don't know. But co- comfort, sure. Uh, you know, it's that's what, what most people, when they get comfortable with something, they will they'll stick with it even if there does even if there is problems because you know it's the whole devil you know versus the devil you don't type of thing and mm-hmm. i could i could totally see farmers for instance being extremely skeptical of anybody whether they they're actually doing this or not but what what the what the typical farmer i could see seeing is somebody trying to like basically get you know basically sell them this uh, miracle where you know this is no 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 he's talking about his neighbors who can like look at their I, field I, and look at his field it's still <laughs> it's not the it's it, it doesn't matter it's it, 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 just a general idea like they're still skeptical because you know they they they, they think something else must be going on or they, you know, it would be too much work, and why bother? Because again, it's the devil—the devil we know versus the devil we really don't. Yeah. Even even if you do have that option of being able to ask, I Joel think that's why Salatin government questions and the directly. state and all of it still here. Yeah, the devil you know there's, versus the devil you don't. There's, well, we've talked about it plenty of times. There's mar- there's a market demand currently for it. Unfortunately, there is. Most people, most people believe, even if they are disaffected, if they are disillusioned, if they are just in pissed off. There's a deep down a part of them that thinks it can work. Well, no, not even not even that. I think more so most people, no matter how apathetic to involve they are in the system, most people at their at the core believe in that necessity. And that's a foregone conclusion that government will be here. It's 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 an axi- it is it's an axiomatic truth for them that government has been around for like mo- in most people's minds, government has been around forever. I mean, realistically, what's it? Ten thousand years? What was Jericho? That was that the, that was the first one, right? Was that it? Like ten thousand years, something like that? Not Jericho, something. Up. I I don't know the the point um, at when it became, you know. Well, Ben Stone talks about it. Quote, unquote, government, you know, where it was. But I would have to guess it would be around that first empire, wouldn't you think? The first. Well, yeah, whatever it was. Babylonian Empire. No, I think I can't remember what it was. Akkad, Sargon. Um, um, No, it was before that. I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. But whatever it was, that was the. Nimrod. It's considered the it's considered the first. You know, I think it was like somewhere around 10,000 years ago. Um, But anyway, I mean, in the in the. In the scope of time, the overall, Sumerians, yeah, well, that's what it was. Time doesn't exist, but as in so far that it does, um, in the scope of in the scope of uh, the history of the world, that ten thousand years is minuscule. And even in this in the scope of hu- uh, human life, it's still like you know, it's still kind of a blip. So you know, it wasn't that long ago that it. Did well, if exist. a rock is four million years old, then yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So 
it, it hasn't it hasn't been around forever, but that's just what people believe, and most people believe, like I said, they believe it to be an axiomatic truth. It's a non-starter for so many people. I mean, how many people do you run into if the if the conversation ever shifts to the possibility of the removal of government? How many people do you run into that are actually a, a, at some level aghast at the very idea of that? It's like, what, what do you mean that that just can't be done? It has to be government. You know, how many people's first reaction is, well, there would be chaos. You know, because that's just what people are trained to believe. That's what they're conditioned to think. They don't. They don't think that it can be privatized, man. They just don't see that the services that the government provides could be privatized and voluntary. Well, everything but because the, you private know because privatization you're, you're going to join the military or die. Privatization has been demonized. Yeah. You know the same as no. you know the the same as free like actual free markets and the actual uh, trade uh, you know unrestricted trade of goods has been yeah confused there'll be people selling babies it's like yes <sighs> but it's been it's been confused with this cronyism slash fascism model a uh, fascistic model that's been in place for quite yeah. a while and that's what you know the state planned capitalism the the caricatures of the greedy monopoly man uh you know capitalists are still they, they they still get rolled out and and that's what's and people still you know the and whoever the you know the, the the latest ceo of the day is to hate you know that that still gets trotted out that that old trope gets and those trotted guys out are just over puppets you know? well yeah but that trope gets trotted out over and over and over again and, and are a lot of those people in some ways bad sure they're take a lot of those people are taking advantage of the corrupt system and in, in really um, to, 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 a, to a really big extent where they're actually like, you know, making, they're actually profiting off the tax cattle as well, which, you know, becomes a problem for, well, me, uh, and I'm sure you as well. And plenty of people like us, uh, when they, when oh, they yeah. reach Taxes that level. Are, so, you know, own a business that can't avoid taxes. I'm, I'm talking to the crowd here. O own a business that can't avoid paying taxes and call me and just, I think most people who are for taxation or whatever you want to call it, the socialization of things have, n have never worked a real job, have never had a real business, have never worked for, have never been in a family business or anything like that. All they have been is either a leech off of somebody or born into a welfare situation to oh, where, you know, they think everything is just sunshine and rainbows. And I don't free think, shit. I don't think, I don't think that's the case. Either. I think unfortunately a lot of people who even have maybe even have work experience, but maybe just at the lowest level, you know, a ca you know, maybe a cashier job or something like an entry level position into something like that, or like maybe in retail, they, yeah. they still, even people like that don't grasp the bigger picture because they don't understand it because they don't recognize because plenty of the, plenty of people, I know the people type of people, I, or at least I think the type of people you're, you're referring to, a lot of those people do have jobs, um, but they don't, they're not the, they've never run, you know, running the business is the important thing. If you've never done that, you've, it's really hard to pass uh, judgment. Well, on. they see how much they're getting taxed, but they can't imagine how much their business oh, like, because they're I, not getting. Yeah, like they're not seeing it. The only, re I mean, the only reason I didn't have to deal with more when I ran my business for all those years was because I was actually, you know, I was a sole proprietor, and the, you know, the smartest way I was told was to form an LLC so I could be protected at some on some level. But I was still able to basically file as a in, an individual you know i didn't actually have to file like i didn't have to do all the corporate you know, the corporate level taxes and stuff like that and uh, or anything else you would have to do on the if you have employees and whatnot because even, even when i did have people working for me i only did, oh yeah ever had employees, it becomes a nightmare well yeah I, well that's why when i did i for, there was year for you know i think at least five five or six years i had employees <laughs> off and on but because of regulations not to <laughs> Well, yeah, but I Not had rehash. I had, yeah, well, I I had contractors instead of employees because it was too much of a uh, of a nightmare for me to have to jump through all those hoops to actually just to ha have it's people. In, no, it's you can't make a dollar. You can't make any money if yeah, you do. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, almost like. Go ahead. Or you can't charge. You can't charge for all of the regulations you have to pay for. You have to add that into the price and then you have to charge people, Hey, this is the price. And they go, Holy snikes. What is, why, why is this price so high? You go, I ask your Congressman, do you want the product or not? Yeah. Uh, it, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be reality in my opinion. And it, it is. 
Yeah. I mean, like I said, luckily for me, there wasn't, because as I've also mentioned before, there, I, the one thing I always got really lucky about with living here in New York, despite, you know, the misery it's caused me for most of the time I've lived here, the, the one g- really good thing that I got completely lucky on was that somehow, some way, the dog sitting business had slipped through the cracks of the New York legislature and nothing had ever really come up about making it illegal, legal, making, you know, putting these regulations, whatever, making you have to get this type of permit, this type of license. It never came up. I mean, to the point that, uh, I I think I've told the story before when I first got my business, I went to my then, uh, my, well, I went to my cousin, uh, my cousin in law, who then was the town clerk in the township that I reside in. And he hooked me up with the head of the building and zoning department at, and I can't remember her name at, the, but, uh, at the time I, she, you know, she, this woman, uh, uh, emailed me back and said to, to call her and then we would have a conversation. And during that conversation, she told me that, well, basically your business falls into what I would call a gray area. And this was like a politician, you know, a bureaucrat. <laughs> Basically, like a, this is how they explained it to me. Yeah, it falls in a gray area. We don't really have anything for, don't have anything against. Uh, just try to keep quiet for a while and hopefully nobody bothers you. And if anybody reports you, I'll you know I'll contact you first, which was the deal she worked. And you out would with my think you would think it'd be in New York. There'd be like twenty billion more regulations for dogs. And- yeah, it, well, yes, you would think so. But even without that, just if just having to hire employees, even without those regulations and permits and licenses, just the, the fact of hiring employees. And this was pre Obama. You know, this was pre ACA. So not even have to deal with all that stuff. Just having like a certain amount of employees, and if you have to pay them benefits, and yeah, and all, and all the other stuff. Oh yeah, it's a nightmare. And, and like he, and, you know, people talk about the greedy capitalists. Here I was, somebody who was started a business on my own and was attempting to hire like ten to twenty people. Like at one point, I was trying to build things up that quickly that I was going to have a need for that many. Well, employees, but it, like I said, I ended up being contractors because I realized all the hoops I was going to jump for. But here I was in my little town trying to create at least 20, you know, at least 10 or at least 10, hopefully 20 jobs. And I was paying these people excellent money. Like people were essentially getting paid $20 an hour to walk dogs from me. You know, so when people talk about the greedy capitals, like here I was bending over backwards to make sure not only that I I crossed that, you know, dotted every uh, I and crossed every T that the government threw at me in the first place and trying to avoid whatever else I could, you know, without just put, not dealing with, you know, rather than like trying to skirt it, just like not dealing with it, you know, not implementing that. So I didn't have to deal with it like that type of stuff. Still, I, I, you know, I was still trying to go out of my way to pay people good money and they still kept throwing more things at me that would have made it harder. And like, that's what like, you know, with minimum wage talk and stuff like that, you know, people talk about, oh, everybody, you know, living wage, $15. That would have killed me if I was forced to pay my employees who I was already paying, you know, like 20 Like, but these were people I trusted, but like anybody could come in and say like, well, this is the minimum now. If I wanted to pay, you know, I have to pay you this. It's like, if you throw more regulations at me and I have to adjust my pricing structure and maybe adjust what I pay future, you know, employees, contractors, because I can't afford to pay this much anymore because of all this stuff, you know, and I have to start dropping it closer to that. But now you're forcing me. It's like so insane because people don't think about that. They just think about that. They think that when they talk about wanting this stuff, that it only affects these mega corporations who can afford it. It's like, no, the reality is the majority of the businesses are people like me, people like you. Yeah. Individuals yeah. or, you know, small groups that get together and try to form a small business or a, a, a farm or whatever. You, you know, know what, what the problem is, is this, the small businesses don't lobby as aggressively and like literally go down to Washington and st- as a, a, a lobby u- union essentially and like stuff the pockets of these people and lobby for their candidates to get in, et cetera, et cetera, and play the game too. Like the good guys almost never want to play the good, the game. And that's why they lose. Unfortunately, most of the time, because there's way more good guys than there are bad guys. And you know, the bully's always going to train wreck you until you say, all right, no, no, thanks. I'm, I'm going to fight back. They're going to then go look for the next person they can bully. Well, on that note, I think uh, we should probably get wrapping up since this was kind of an impromptu. We weren't going to anyway. talk about repealing the nineteenth. No, I do not want to get oh. into that tonight. 
We're already. Okay. All this, right. This was already an impromptu show. We uh, we started doing it. We st- you and I just started talking. We were waiting for Andre, who still never showed up. I, I hope everything's all right with him. Last time this happened, it just some came up with his daughter, and he forgot to reach out to us. So hopefully uh, everything's all right. But anyway, yeah, like I said, we're we're making a show out of this anyway. So I guess we'll close it out. So thank you everybody for listening. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. And, of course, the, our Patreon is still going. Uh, we do. We had another patron, uh, another new patron, uh, KCS. Thank you very much for your service. Appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we can keep adding some more. There's actually, I think there's an episode due out tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, I'll get it out tomorrow. If not, it'll be out by Saturday. But, um, yeah, if you haven't yet, please go check out our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty, because... We are putting out a lot of content there. We're hopefully going to have a lot more soon. And of course, if we reach our next goal, then we'll increase the amount there. But we've already added, we, fi- we finally got around to adding different like levels of stuff. And uh, I did not at all steal ideas from I'm any other I'm slowly working pod- on the Discord. I did not steal, ed- I of course did not steal any ideas from any other podcast, especially not some um, maybe barbers from Alabama. But uh, we have a bunch of levels of stuff, uh, you know, for our for it's still one dollar though if all if you just want to donate one dollar a month you can still get access to all the shows um, but there will be perks if you want to donate more and there's already a couple of people that do donate more so they will be get to get some of the cool perks like getting the show early and as dave mentioned the discord server once we get that up and running uh we're going to try to start we may start shifting over there maybe if not all the time a decent amount of the time and doing uh, live shows from there which are pa- certain level patrons can actually get in on and listen to live and the top level ones probably could actually get some kind of access where they're going to end up being able to jump in on shows uh, among some other things so once again if you haven't please go check out our patreon and considering donating at least just a dollar a month to get access to all the shows and we put out at least one a week at this point so all right once again thank you everybody for listening and we will catch you next time peace peace This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.